I present this time of the manna of the word of God. I ask you, Lord, that you prepare the atmosphere that is already prepared by the presence of your Holy Spirit. Father, prepare the ears of understanding of your people tonight. I declare and decree, Father God, that the word that has come forward is not me, but you and me, Lord. That you take the glory and the honor, because it's yours ever and forever. In the name of Jesus, and the people say, Thank you a theme that we always talk and everybody wants you but sometimes uh, you have to provoke it and nothing else nothing more than to be blessed or tonight i'm going to talk about blessed there's a whole chapter dedicated to the word blessed and when i think about the word blessed uh we already blessed how many know that we are already blessed because in Jesus we are more than conquerors. We are more than victorious. There's so much inside of us that we don't understand, that we're not uh, still exercising because we don't know the, the depths or the secrets of the Word of God. And if you, 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 if you really go down deeper in the Lord, you will understand the secrets of the kingdom. There are things that are locked up locked up in in the word that if you really is not those type of person that really diligently uh, uh, look for to understand to be to grow to expand to do to mean business in the kingdom of god then uh, we will not pass uh, the territory that we are talking about blessing i remember a scripture that uh, some blessings God give it to people like you don't have to do anything. You just bless. He decides to bless you because he's sovereign. He does as he pleases. Everybody agree with me. But then in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, he tell Joshua three times in chapter 1, he said, I order you, listen to this, I order you, one, to be a strong to be courageous and to this book of the law meditate in it night and day and day and everything that you do will prosper and I be with you all the time that means if Joshua will not do what God tell him to do the presence of God will not be with Joshua but Joshua heard and obeyed the word and the command that God said to him to do and to be courageous. And we see that the life of Joshua was okay because he was victorious. He was a warrior like many of us. That we don't, if we understand that when you are the Lord, you are in war. And everybody agree with me? We are in war. In war, first war is within ourselves. That's the first word between the flesh and the spirit. Then we had to deal with the will, with society, with everything that is out of there, this out of control. But in a way, we could control it because there's power in everyone sitting down here. But then I see how, when, when I think about Solomon, King uh, King's David's son, Solomon... Uh, David died and Solomon took over the kingdom. But then it was a different way that God deal, dealt with Solomon. He said to Solomon, Solomon pray because he, does, he didn't have what it takes. Like many of us, we don't have what it takes to serve God. But it's because grace. Say with me grace. And then when, when the Solomon prayed to God, he did this. Father, I only ask you one thing. Listen to this. He's the one who asked. I ask you that you give me what? Wisdom. To deal and to rule over your people. That was it. You know what God did? He said, since, since you did not ask for power and glory and money. Listen to this. I will give you all of that because you did not ask. And you will be the most 
the most man with wisdom in the entire world. After you and before you, nobody will be like you. Ooh, that's heavy stuff. Why? Because that God, he does as he pleases. And everybody had to be happy. Don't be jealous of nobody's blessing. Because you're going to catch your, yours. Haha, <laughs> come on now. But then, when we go to Jesus, right after he was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights on the desert, and uh, in the gospel, uh, he says that right after he was tempted, he started his ministry, meaning that he passed the test. Um, until we don't pass the test, God doesn't put you in ministry. What does the ministry mean? Ministry means to serve God. Uh, many people want to serve God, but you're not qualified. Uh, you have to wait your time. You have to pay the price. You need to be pure. And you really need and want, desires the things of heaven. And then when Jesus, after he went out of the desert, is the first message to the mass. This message about blessed is crime out there. It's in the corner store. It's on the streets. It's in the city. It's in the country. It's far away in Europe. It's here. It's all over the place. Of the place, uh, the same message God is giving to the entire world, especially to the church. Why? Because the church is God's house. And judgment starts in the house first. And then goes outside. But then when I read, and I preach about that many times before, but every time you read the Bible, how many knows that the Bible is a fountain of fresh water every day different? And I heard this message in different ways, but the Lord told me, speak it. Why? Because the word of God had to be repeated. We had to repeat and repeat and repeat so we do not forget what, what God wants for us. Are you agree with me? Yes. How many times we read the same thing, the same passage, but you get a, a new revelation. Because that's the way God operates. So we're going tonight to, chap to Matthew chapter 5. We're, talking, we're going to talk about the, the, the message or the preaching of the mountain. In, Mas in, Matthew, in Matthew chapter 5, uh, I'm going to get my eyes and we're going to Matthew, Matthew. Let me see. I hope they don't move it last night here. Matthew. Okay, here it is. Chapter 5. Yes. I need water. Are you with me? Um, the word says like this, as follows. And... Much Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in the spirit, because theirs the kingdom of heaven. When God talks about here poor, he is not talking about people that is broken, that, that, that has no job, that uh, sometimes uh, uh, try to portray a face of sadness or anything. When God talks about here, poor and the spirit, because the Bible never agrees with to be poor, except this part over here. To be poor is not from God. How many agree with me? Everyone who served God in the Bible had possessions and riches and glory. Poor doesn't belong to God, upset when he's poor in the spirit. When we read poor in the spirit, what does it mean? A 
poor in the spirit is a person, listen to me, is a person that live a life every day in communion with the Holy Spirit. A poor person is a person that never think about himself better than the other. A poor person depends solely in God. Even though has a job, even though has possession, everything he knows and he lives knowing and assuring that everything is because of God. A poor in the spirit is a person that fears God. Fears God. It's easy when we all together here, we all saints. The problem is when, when nobody sees us. That's what the problem is. That when we show, if it really, we mean business. A poor in the spirit. All the, all the words that is in Matthew chapter 5 connected one to another. You cannot be poor in the spirit if you're not humble. The, the, the word of God, everything is connected. One that with the other. Tell your neighbor, connect the dots. Yes. The whole Bible and the whole walk of God is about connections. Everything we do, everything we said, everything is connected. Whether it have consequences that are good or whether they have consequences that is bad. But God is looking for people that is poor in the spirit, that portray the name of God, that preach the word of God, that exalt his name in a world out there that is going straight to hell. And we are the light of the world. Thank you. Yes. He poor in the spirit. Don't mind showing, telling that I am a man and a woman of God. I'm Christian. I'm a son of the living God. Doesn't feel ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. A poor in the spirit. Everybody knows. Wherever they are. Wherever is a poor in the spirit. Everybody knows. There is something different about that person. Everybody feel it. Everybody feels drawn to that person. Because the presence of God is like, like, like honey to bees. People have to feel or be drawn to you. Like we are drawn to God. Because it's a spiritual connection. And the people need God. That emptiness that is inside everybody out there. And many of us. Only is filled with God's presence. Say with me. Pour in the spirit. Poor in the spirit, never, ever exalt yourself. Never. Never. A poor in the spirit knows that all the glory, all the honor belongs to our God. A poor in the spirit, live a godly life. Do not have time to waste time. No. Time is short. Listen, church. Time is short. If you don't know what's going on out there, if you don't stop out looking at the local news, and you play what's going on out of the box, what's going on in, in, the, in Africa, in the Middle East, in Italy, in Europe, eh, all over the globe, then you will understand. And, and, and what the Bible says, you understand the time we are right now. We are in the last times. Time is crucial. Tell you nobody, don't waste time. Don't waste it. You have to be careful. Have to be careful every minute, every hour, every day. How do you invest your time? We need to speak up. Speak up. Everybody here have no excuse. I don't know how to talk. I don't know how to read. There's no excuse because everybody here has a testimony. Everybody. That's why you're sitting here. Because God brought you through whatever mess we went through before. Everybody here has a testimony. Say with me, poor in the spirit. How many want to be blessed? Tell your neighbor, be poor in the spirit. 
Yes. Communion. Poor in the spirit. Communion. Listen to me. It's so important. It's so important. It's vital that we work in communion with God in and and with a brother and sister. Oh, nobody heard me. The Lord said, if you don't love your sister and your brother that you see, how in well you going to know love me if you don't see me? Amen. Isn't it common sense? It's not that I'm interested to know about your dirty clothes and your business, but that's the point of everything. We need communion one another as we have it with the Lord. And the only key, listen to me, the only key that brings communion is the word love. We need, all of us, we need to be filled with God's love. Because God's love makes us understand what it means, what we, what we need to communicate. You know every Sunday that we give bread, coffee, and whatever else we have here, there's a meaning for that. You know the only meaning is called fellowship. When you live out of this place without fellowship, you're breaking a brief spiritual law in the kingdom. That is for you to spend one or two minutes with somebody that you might give a word of encouragement. Last Sunday, I remember there was a gentleman who said, Pastor Rafael, I've been wishing to talk to you. I said, why don't you? You're always busy. Where am I now? And the guy started talking about personal things. You see, I didn't ask. It's everything is, 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 is orchestrated by the Holy Spirit. There are people who are dying with the problem. And they need to speak up and they don't, they don't know to who. The minister was, uh, Minister Rennie was uh, singing, God, if God can use me. We were not singing, God use me. Oh, oh come on. Yeah. We were not singing, God use me. Yeah. And then how the need is in front of us and we are blinded. We are blinded. Listen, when a church, when a house, this is a house. How many knows this is a house? And this is not the church, this is not the world, it's you and I. When a church has a strong communion, listen to me, provoke the presence of the Holy Spirit in the place. Amen. Miracles take place. Amen. You want to know what the Holy Spirit don't move? Were there miracles, signs, and wonders? As if it is communion. You know why in the books of Acts, why the apostle uh, lifted up the dead, uh, made so many, mis so many miracles that even with the shadow of Peter, the sick people got healed. Oh, come on now. You know why? It's communion. First with God and then with the other apostles. Communion. And we got issues, all of us. We got issues with that, uh, that thing called communion. I don't, I don't, I don't want to know anybody's business here. I'm talk I want to talk about things of the Spirit. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? How many want to see this house filled? How many want not God to give us a bigger house? Then we need order. How many understand that? God is a God of order. And wherever we are united together, giving praise, He wants all the attention to follow His command, His Lord, to love one another. That God is going to know, they love me. Look at them. They're loving each other. Listen, when this love, love covers multitude of sins. Anybody could cover me? Anybody could cover me? It's about covering. It's about covering. Because the world out there is not going to cover me. They're going to kill me if they can. You know, they hate me to death. 
and they hate you. They hate all of us. Why? Because there's power. They cannot understand how can we be happy in times of trouble. Come on now. How can we be? They say, what's wrong with these people? I wish you could see the way they look at me in my job. They Muslim, all of them. <laughs> and the boss is Jewish. And they look at me and analyze me from bottom to head. And my hair that is not even there anymore. They try to figure out me. And I know where they're coming from. And when I throw one of those uh, x-ray or laser beams uh, from the word of God, they have nothing to say. They get struck. Now, you know what, what, the, what that provoke? Respect. Every time they see me, the traffic stops. Because I make sure they know I'm a man of God. I'm a man of God. I serve my father. And I'm not ashamed. One of, them, uh, one of the, the dispatchers said, Rafael, I need to speak to you. And I said, I've been waiting. <laughs> He's a Muslim man. He told me, I have questions for you. And I said, anytime, my brother, I've been waiting. You see, that's what we're supposed to be doing, provoking because God gave us the power in the world. You know what God says? You are the salt of the earth. Anybody understand what is the salt? The world needs seasoning. They have no salt, no season. It tastes, how it tastes, uh, uh, blended, yes. They take, they Come on now. <laughs> yes, they come on, say again. They need what? Yeah. You know, this is the same in, in the Spanish uh, television. If it's Goya, it has to be good. <laughs> Listen to me. And I say, if it's Christian, it has to be better. Ah, <laughs> uh, come on, give him praise now in the house. I have 15 minutes to go. Number four. Bless are they that mourn for they shall be comforted how many are crying here how many are crying nobody there's so many people that are crying inside for whatever reason um, Neil and I we went to a funeral Sunday correct to um, this ne the um, Leroy's nephew died in an automobile accident 26 years old. And the, uh, in play life, and everybody was mourning. But I'm talking about other mourning that is not related to funeral and death. Listen to me. The earth, Roman chapter 1, the earth is crying out to the Lord. The earth, mother nature. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? How many, do you know that the earth could talk? You know when it's shake and strangle and it does all that it does, the earth is talking. It's so much going on top of the earth, which is God's territory. And the earth is crying only for one thing. Listen to this, one thing. They say we cry for the manifestation of the son and daughter of God. You know what that means? We have the power to stop the mess out there. And we don't, we're not doing anything. You know what I heard this week, Minister Rennie? That there's a uh, society, a movement. They want to legalize uh, prostitution. Has it? My God, what else was next? And they were talking, I was listening to, this, to the talk show, and of course, the wealthy people, yeah, I need that, uh, because my wife, whatever, yeah, and many people, yeah, I need that. Let them uh, be a uh, 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 order for them, and, and, and whatever, 
I'm not listening. If it's only that, but it's so much going on on the earth. And Jesus is just sitting. You know for what? The judgment day is coming. That's why we have to stand up and deliver the message of Jesus Christ to whoever believes in him shall be saved. I'm not going to allow the rocks to talk. I will say it. I will say it. I was talking to a businessman two days ago, a CEO of a jewelry company. And this man has power. Uh, he talks nice and elo eloquent English as a businessman. And uh, he smells good. And what caught my attention that he is Hispanic and don't speak Spanish. That's why God opened the door through that little situation. I, I spoke Spanish to him and he stood like a wall. Then I say, where are you from? Then he said, my grandfather was a Spanish. I live in California. Oh, that's why you didn't understand what I said in Spanish. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Then my father never taught me Spanish, even though I have a big <laughs> name in Spanish. And then listen to this. God opened a conversation about that only thing. And this man stopped. When we got to his destination, he stopped and said, tell me more of what you're saying. I want to go to your church. I didn't even know that that was going to happen. But I was aware of my surrounding. Everywhere, everything that happens. That's what I call communion with the Lord. This man that has so much power. There's an emptiness in him that he said, I want more. He said, look at my preaching on YouTube. Free. He gave me his business card and said, call me whenever you need me. There's nothing greater than serve God. Nothing. Nothing. Doors will open. Listen to me. Doors will open without you knocking because that is the one that opens door and closes door. Give him praise in the house. I got 10 minutes. Number five. Bless are who? Bless are the meek. Matthew chapter 5 5. Bless are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Say with me, make. <laughs> you know, when Jesus says what he said, he means business. In other part of the Bible, he said, learn from me that I'm humble and meek. And you will find rest in your soul. All of us, all of us, we have to understand what it means to be humble. A humble person does not do what he wants to, unless the boss says it. A humble person, listen to me, watches carefully reactions to his actions. A humble person is a person soft-spoken. You never saw Jesus speaking loud. Anybody? Except one day. Where was that? At the temple. Listen to me. At the temple. Because there was no order in the house. There's nothing more eloquent than a man and a woman of God with nice, soft, speaking voice. There's a problem with reaction, the Lord was telling me. There are people that get angry easy. Aye? Easy. Easy. 
And the Lord is not like that. Listen to me. I was driving back to work at night time, two days ago also. And driving a nice Cadillac Escalade, the last one. Very expensive. And it was a son of the devil behind me. It was bumper to bumper. And he was uh, aggressive driving. You know, people are crazy out there. They're getting crazy. I mean, lunatic, crazy driving. It's like a war out there. And this guy, uh, he's uh, pushing me. He's in the back. Then he, say, he gets to next to me. And then he rushes to get in front of me in one lane. Then I react. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to lock him up. So I press the accelerator. That, that big thing, you know, it's like a horse. It roars. The engine of that car is like a, like a lion. It roars, literally. And when I, um, as soon as I step on the uh, accelerator, I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit that said, Stop. Stop. Don't fall for it. It's a son of the devil. It's an angel of the devil to get you into trouble. Then when I looked, the type of car he was driving, it was a BMW new. I said, God, tell your neighbor, reaction. Be careful with reactions because we misinterpret or we might, might fall, listen to me, we might fall into God, into the devil's temptation to react in a way that is not godly. And I gave praise to God like a maniac on the highway. I got to the job like, like a feather fly in the car. And I was driving slow. But it was in the spirit that God delivered me from the trouble. I couldn't make get home super late. I messed up the car that put in my hands because they trust me. Tell you never be careful with reaction. The meek will inherit the earth. Listen to me. God. He's not going to destroy the earth. What is going to happen, he's going to destroy the system of the earth. There's not going to be no more wickedness. But God is not going to destroy the earth. There will be new earth and new heaven. But that don't mean he's going to destroy the earth. The earth, listen to me, is reserved for those who love the Lord. The Lord. The Lord. It's reserved. There's not going to be no more wickedness. We're going to rule forever and ever. Amen. Oh, I feel like praising him now. Oh, I give you praise, Lord. Number seven. Bless are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. You know, God's love is no longer there. The Bible says that because of the, the wickedness of the people, the love of God in men is going to be cold. And we have to exercise mercy. It's easy to judge anybody. You know that we are so judgmental? Can I have an amen or no? Amen. I don't know about you, but I was so judgmental. I was. Great. I even talk about the way you dress, look, your hair, anything. Because that's what I learned. But when I read that God has mercy on those who have mercy, that you shall not judge anybody, nobody what they do, because you shall be judged the same way I stopped. Then I grew. And I, I was in control of many of my emotions and, and bad patterns of life. Because the word, how many knows that the word brings order to your life? 
if we don't show mercy, says the Lord, there's not going to be mercy upon your life. Bottom line. Tell your neighbor, have mercy on me. Yes. Have mercy on me. Listen. All of us that is sitting here, all of us today is because his mercy is new every morning. Giving glory in the house. Every morning. I'm finishing. Five minutes. Yes. How many are receiving? Amen. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see the Lord. That your name will be pure in heart. You know, in Psalm 51, 17, I want you to put it there. Look what it says. The, say with me, the heart. Uh, chapter, uh, Psalm 51, yeah. Listen to this. The sacrifices of God say sacrifices. sacrifices. Yes. You know that praising God is a sacrifice? You know when you're praising the Lord and lifting your hands and you're standing up for the Lord, you know that sacrifice? But listen to this. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. How many are broken here? You know what it means broken in the spirit? A nobody. Right? I don't know if you know. And nobody dust in the wind. You know, many people believe that there's somebody. We somebody in the Lord. Don't get me wrong. But when you try to portray yourself against other, like and somebody, listen, you nobody. How many understand what I'm talking about? I'm not talking about uh, self-esteem or low self-esteem. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about to be broken. That you understand that you understand that you are walking because of God. That you get up in the morning, in the morning because of God. That you go night a bed because of God. That you get up because of that. Because your heart is pumping and living because of God. Because everything that moves around you is because of God. He rules. He rules. He rules. And then when you're broken hearted, you submit. And that's the big problem right there. Because we understand that there's a big fight among the flesh and the spirit. Tell yourself, easy. <laughs> yes. A broken and contrite heart. Oh God, thou will not despise. Say with me, thank you, Jesus. When I say, God, why are you talking about the heart? Why not the mind, the eye, the mouth? Why the heart? Because the heart, listen to me, the heart. From the heart comes everything. Everything that is in the heart comes through the what? The mouth. Now what is everything in the eyes, in the ear, in the head, in the heart? And the connection with the heart is the soul. The soul, listen to me, the soul controls the heart. If your spirit doesn't control your soul, your heart gets in trouble. Because God searches the heart, not the person. We, 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 all the people here, we, we tend to see the person and we judge it. But because what we see, but God don't see what we see. God, look up the heart. Say with me, pure in heart. You know, that's not easy. Because we are filthy people. A nature that is corrupted. I don't care how holy you are. Somehow, someday, the birds uh, try to be nest on your head. Anybody agree what I'm talking about? It's not easy. I need to purify this heart daily. You know what I do? Dialysis. 
said with me, dialysis. What I do, I, I take the word of the Lord. And obligate my soul to submit to my heart the word of God in my life. Day by day, second by second, hour by hour. And that's the only way I will have victory over myself. Give him praise in the house. The only way. If we, I get up in the morning, all right, the first thing that I open up the light, say the light. The light is the eyes. The first thing that I say, good morning, Holy Spirit. You know what you're doing? You put yourself in front. But as there are people in other church, not here, in other church. You know what they do in the morning? They take the remote control that is nearby and with the eye closed, chaboom. And then they listen and then they wake up. That's evil. That's not pleasing God. Because we are spirit. How many knows we are spirit? And we are flesh also. So it's two channels. That's not easy to control. Hallelujah. I got two minutes. <laughs> Number nine. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. Say with me, peacemaker. You know, when I read this, I said, that means I'm not your son? I said, well, check yourself up. How many times you've been an int in inter, you know, mediator? I'm on somebody and me. You know that we are mediators? You know the police have mediator when they, they say uh, trouble out there and they call a mediator talk over a, a mic and they talk and then negotiate the situation blah 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 but how many news that we are peacemakers Amen. you know what a peacemaker does bring peace shalom we carry God's shalom how many knows that the peace of God is within you People are looking for peace. They don't find it. You know what they do? They uh, started drinking, partying, and doing all kind of stuff to find peace in their souls. They don't find it. How many times you see your brother and your sister going through something and you don't say or do anything? And then we call ourselves, Son of God, please. And we don't do the things of our Father. Hello, somebody. I need somebody. I need somebody to encourage me. Listen, I go to hell and back every day. The devil has a party with me. Accusing me and telling me. I'm bringing things to my mind. But every day, I have found, I find has peace because I cry to my God. But I wish I could have somebody who would encourage me and tell me, go ahead, brother. The Lord is with you. Who could be against you? You know that one word, one word could save a soul from go to hell. That you never speak up. How many are some of that of God here? How many? Raise your hand. <laughs> Raise it. Raise everybody by faith. Yes, even though you're not peacemaker, raise it. You will be. Tell, say, I will be. I will be. Yes. And the, the Lord just want to see that you agree with him. And he will do it steadily. He will do the job. Tell your neighbor, peacemaker. You know that about 5 billion people go to hell every day? How many? How many? 5 million, billion people go straight to hell every single day. Tell your neighbor, what are you doing? Uh-huh. You know how many young people in the schools are lost? 
young people. I see them, boys and girls in school, full of demons. But you know, no demon, no demon has power over you. Amen. No demon, no one. God placed young people, old people, black people, red people, wherever we are, we are to be peacemakers, to be mediators, to save somebody. Thank you, Jesus. I got two minutes. Yes. Oh, my God. <sighs> Please stand up. I want to end this because I promise. How many receive it tonight? I'm going to say the last one. Bless our they which are persecuted for righteousness sake for they is the kingdom of heaven bless are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say O man of evil against you falsely for my rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For because they persecuted they the prof prophets which were before you. Thank you, Jesus. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, blessed. You know, one of the things when I read the word blessed in Hebrew. It means a proof. It means somebody that is qualified. And some blessings of God that we need, that we need qualifications and some others, we don't need anything. But God is looking for men and women and young people who um, exalt His holy name. Uh, wherever we are, whatever we do, that we mean business, that we really uh, be a person, that we learn that the sermon of the mountain is still rowing out there. The God needs uh, these people to wake up, to raise up. Because there are people to be saved. Uh, because we are, have to mean business. Because God wants to use all of us. I don't want the rocks to speak for me. I want to speak for God. I want to live for Him. Minister. Thank you, Jesus. We want to thank God tonight because He is good and His mercy to endure it forever. How many of you know that Renison used to sing? Santo. I am sitting there and I'm looking at him and he's 20 years old today. Not today, but he's now 20. And I remember when he was like six, or seven, we used to sing this song in church. And we asked him to sing the song, one of my Chinese friends, and said, if you sing that song, I'll give you $10. I am a conqueror, victorious, and I'm reigning with Jesus. I'm seated in heavenly places with him, with him. For the kingdom of God is within me. I know no defeat, only victory. For the kingdom of God is within me. I know no defeat, only victory. I am a conqueror, victorious. And I'm reigning with Jesus. When Je I'm seated, I'm seated in heavenly places. In heavenly places with Him. With Him. Only with Him for the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God is within me. I know the defeat. I know no defeat. Only victory. For the kingdom of God is within me. I know no defeat. Only say I am a conqueror. I am a conqueror. Victorious. I'm reigning. I'm reigning with Jesus. With Jesus. I'm seated. I'm seated in heavenly places. In heavenly places. With Him. With Him. With him, 
with him for the kingdom of God for the kingdom of God is within me I know no defeat I know no defeat only victory for the kingdom of God is within me I know no defeat only victory I am a conqueror victorious I'm reigning I'm reigning with Jesus with Jesus I'm seated I'm seated in heavenly places in heavenly with him with him with him with him for the kingdom of god for the king is within me i know no defeat i know no defeat only victory for the kingdom of god is within me i know no defeat only victory repeat after me i am a conqueror i am a conqueror in jesus in jesus believe it tonight Yes, Lord. Claim victory over your family. Claim victory over your situation. Claim victory over every situation in your situation in your life. Over sickness, over defeat. The things that seem to bind you. Claim victory over immigration situations. Yes, Lord. Claim victory over your job. Claim victory in your ministry. That God will take you to the next step. Say, I am a conqueror. I am a and conqueror. I will make it. I'm going to make it. Thank you. Yes, Lord. On the note, I want to ask the congregation to come to the front. I'm not going to lay hands on nobody. We're going to pray together. You're going to hold your brother and your sister as a symbol of strength and unity and communion with the Holy Spirit. Everybody that is here, you come to the front. Hold each other hand by hand because there's power in unity. We need power and it's in the unity of the Holy Spirit. We're going to pray together upon the word that it was brought tonight. Yes, I'm going to pray and we're going to pray together. Hold somebody next to you. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Let's get in the spirit here. Meditate in the Father. Father God. Jesus. Yes, Lord. He's all I need. Yes, Lord. I need He's all Yes, Father I need Oh Jesus Yes, Lord He's all I need Yes, Lord Hallelujah That I need. Yes, Father. Holy Spirit, you're I need. Ooh, Jesus is all. All that I need. Father, tonight, I pray. I lift up my voice into you, Lord. Presenting you this body, your church. Father, which you share your blood for your people. Father, I ask you that you ignite the fire, the Holy Ghost power. That you empower every person that is here yes, at front, Lord God. Spirit, Holy Spirit, lift up every person that is here. 
as an evangelist to preach to bring the gospel forward to be humble to be meek father god to be broken hearted to be poor in the spirit oh god that you take away everything that hinders the productivity of soul that bring that we're going to bring to your feet father god in the name of the Lord, I bring order to every life that is in here. Everything that is taking your time, Lord God, be the Lord of everybody here, Father. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. I bless you. The blessings be upon you of the Lord. But knowing that we must obey and fulfill the job, the work, the fight that is around us every day, every time, every second. In the name of the Lord, I declare more you that you are more than victorious in Jesus Christ. That you do anything that you cannot do. I open up your mouth. I release you. I put words in you. The word of the God of the Lord be alive. Alive. Alive in you. In the name of Jesus, I open up your mouth that you react to the Holy Spirit, that you be sensitive to God, to your Father. I rebuke every spirit of orphan in the name of Jesus. And you feel with your presence every person that is in your Father God. In the name of Jesus, I cover you with the blood of the Lamb that revive you that cleans you, that lifts you up in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's give praise. Let's praise. Him. Father, tonight we thank you for another day, for another night. Now we are living this place, but not your presence. I ask you, Father, that you extend the hours of sleep, uh, everyone that is in here, that through the night you minister to your people, Lord God. Father, bless Pastor Davy and Pastor Angie, wherever they are in Jamaica, Lord God. Give them a safe trip. We declare God's protection in them father god let this wedding be the wedding of cana in the name of jesus that your presence be with them lord god bring them back in harmony in love in everything they do father god use them use them father god as you always do in the name of the lord father god and the people of god says tell your neighbor you are blessed I lift my eyes up onto the mountain. 